Well, you could certainly see this one coming for years. Local talk jock Howie Carr has had a rocky relationship with WRKO, the station that broadcasts his show, but no longer as the station declined to renew Carr's contract, which expired last week. Now the question is where Howie might take his on-air shtick, given that RKO is the last remaining commercial talk station in town. Well, I just have to say, Howie, two years ago when WTKK changed its format, he had this to say, because they had tried to hire him and the, the RKO wouldn't let him out of his contract. He said, well, two years, in two years, I'll be on FM one way or another. And then he went on to predict who wouldn't be and who would make it, who wouldn't make it. Of course, he said that Jim and Marge wouldn't make it because they are moon bats. So meanwhile, <laughs> this is basically one of the only talk stations here. Hey, let's talk, call a spade a spade here. He was fired. There's no difference between not renewing a contract and, and getting fired. His contract was not picked up. He has no place to go. People aren't running out there rushing to pay, you know, Howie Carr $800,000, $900,000 a year. If he goes to MEX, he'll just be a, another lost voice, I mean, and, and, not, and not for that kind of money. Well, that, that's it. It's the money. I mean, when you say yeah. he was fired, Entercom might have been willing to renew him for a much lower yeah. figure. It's a much smaller business than it used to be. But... Howie, I'm sure, wanted to make the same money he was always making. Uh, I think this is a dying medium, except for sports. Uh, Non-sports talk uh, in, on the commercial airwaves is not doing well mm -hmm. at all. It's doing pretty well on public radio stations, including WGBHs. Yeah, anybody want to guess why that is? Uh, what, what's your opinion as it's, to why it, it is? FM, AM talk is just too dumb. I mean, it's too tedious and repetitive and constant with the same thing over and over and over. I mean, Obamacare or Gruber and that you just can't take it. I would agree with that. Well, that's what I was wondering when I heard that. He, uh, are we to look at this as an end of an era in Boston in terms of communications? Or are we to look at it as a complete shift in how people consume information and want to consume information? And that there are talk shows that are doing quite well, thank you, that have an ideological bent. Mm. But if it's the kind of you use the word shtick mm. that he gave, mm. then can't you do better and go get Rush? Right? Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, if oh. you're choosing, right? <laughs> Although conserv even the national conservative shows have, have not been doing great mm -hmm. in the ratings, broadly speaking. You are seeing a real shift in conservative media. Conservative media overall is doing just fine. It's shifting in different ways, though. Uh, the Pew Research Center did a, a study uh, just a couple weeks ago looking at where conservatives get their, their news from. And the number one source by far was Fox News. Mm -hmm. uh, it had 47% of people who are consistent conservatives says that's their number one source. Talk radio was far behind at only 13 percent. I think if you did those numbers a few years ago, you would have found talk radio being a, a larger share, a local talk radio. Um, you're also seeing this shift to, to digital. I mean, Glenn Beck, you know, separated himself from, from Fox News, but is making an enormous sum of money and has built really a pretty tremendous business with The Blaze and his, his online streaming network. So we're gonna, we'll see whether, whether Carr can adapt to that or whether he's sort of being pushed out, but the, the, the shift is happening in a real mm. way towards digital. Yeah, I, I think it's a little risky to conclude that talk radio is dying as acutely as uh, some of us are suggesting. Uh, radio ratings have been in flux for the last few years since the rating agents switch to a new way. You've talked about that often on this program, Emily, so it's hard to tell if it's really lost its, its bounce with the mass audience. Uh, here in Boston, a little different story, certainly the heyday of talk radio, conservative or otherwise, Brudnoy, Jerry Williams, Gene Burns, Pat Whitley, all that stuff, that's, that's history now, and Howie's uh, departure from a major outlet is, I guess, a little bit of an end of the era, but uh, he'll, uh, I don't think he'll be going hungry, because okay. Because yes. my understanding is he's taking his regional syndication network hmm. over with him. So it really doesn't matter if his new Boston outlet is uh, somewhat obscure. He can probably reach close to as many people and maybe make as much or more money than he was making at RKO this way. And don't forget, I've never seen anyone who wanted out uh, from their sure. current employer well, more than want. he wanted That's out of there. Sure. I think what I'd be interested to know is that when you talk about the, the, the shift in conservative radio, if it's local people, because you know, Howie was very local. Right. And so the question is, are, you know, is it surviving in these other formats nationally, mm -hmm. on a national space, but not so much in local space? Well, as we saw on yeah. election night, uh, the conservative, at yeah. least Massachusetts-style sentiment is not dead. It elected yeah. a governor and passed a ballot mm -hmm. question. So, But they may not talk about it on the radio. Well, that's true. <laughs>